All right, so I am so excited to introduce our final speaker of the night. And our final speaker also has three fun facts. So Kyle is, uh, he's the founder of FaZe, and uh, his three fun facts are that he's spoken at the United Nations. He used to be a professional snowboarder. And as a kid, he amassed uh, a 10K Pokemon card collection by trading at flea markets. Kyle, come on up and share your fuck up. Thank you, Marsha. So first off, hands off to Marsha, Erica, and Francesca for your amazing stories and all your amazing work all the time. Um, I love volunteering, and I volunteer at Founders Institute, Techstars, but this is the only place I come where I see more women entrepreneurs than men, and that's amazing. <laughs> So this is me in 2018, that's me on a coach. Um, this is a segue to something that'll come later in my story, but um, the article that was written about me says that I'm either the ultimate optimist or a glutton for punishment or both. So that's uh, a little bit about what the world thought about me in 2018. But before that, um, let's talk about one of my previous failures. Uh, it's called Eve Tab. And I started this in 2014, and like, what could go wrong? We had advertising that said, drink more, pay less with EveTab. And it was an app that lets you prepay for an app at a bar or nightclub. You could skip the line and get in for free. Like, that sounds awesome, right? Just discounted drinking, skipping the line. What could go wrong? So, uh, first off, we didn't have any ID verification in the app because we thought the guy at the door, that was his job, that wasn't our job. <laughs> so, as you can imagine, we had all these kids buying bar tabs through this app, going, to showing the guy at the door, hey, I got a VIP pass, let me in, and they did it. So, you can imagine who got in trouble for that. It wasn't the bar, <laughs> somehow, it was us. So. Great experience, but many, many things went wrong. Like this was something we never would have considered because again, we thought that this was not part of our job. But when you're building a tech company, sometimes you can get blamed for things that are, you're not really or directly responsible for if something you do impacts the normal process of operations. So this was a big shebang uh, for me. So you can imagine how well EveTab went. Um, some other challenges in the you know, fintech prepaid alcohol space. Investors are not allowed to invest in it. Didn't know that either. PDC, you know this one. Yeah, exactly. So raising capital, not easy. Um, so we did this. We raised a little bit of money from angel investors, but it died pretty quick because we had enough lawsuits to fill a big box. So. <laughs> That was, that was pretty quick, but it did last a little bit of a year, um, and then we got so scared, we cried ourselves to sleep. But we did get into Notable Life. We got all kinds of articles about us, um, but this was a little bit before all the lawsuits happened. But still, nonetheless, great experience. Um, and, you know, preemptive to failure. I think that a lot of people need to understand that failure is a required premeditative, preemptive version for success. You've got to learn how to fail before you'll ever succeed. So then um, I started another company a couple years later after I financially recovered. I also went bankrupt during uh, EveTab as well. So that was a fun experience. So we share that. <laughs> so FaZe was a different story. I've been running FaZe for almost seven years now. And we do digital gift card infrastructure for fintech companies. So that's a lot of fun. So my first little bit of advice before I get into my terrifying story about how my company died three times and we've been sued for millions on top of my other things is find your dream mentor. So when you're starting a business, find the one person who can 100x your business and give them like the deal of a lifetime. Like ask them for $1,000 and give them like 20% of your company just because, not because you want the money, but you want them involved. Maybe this person can introduce you to all the dog distributors in the world or, or ice cream distributors in the world or, or something like that. But like try to reach out to that one person on maybe LinkedIn and do a little bit of research why you want them and you would be shocked because a lot of these people 
they don't often get the opportunity to angel invest. And if you have a one reason why they could give you 100x impact, I guarantee you 99% of the time, as we encourage this in Techstars and Founder Institute to do it, they'll typically invest in you or at least have a conversation with you. It's shocking how few people do this and how big of an impact it can have in your business in the early days. Um, your support structure, so everyone has it. My family really discouraged entrepreneurship. My dad worked for the government. And he told me to go get a job. Um, yeah, he really did not like my entrepreneurship route. He said I was pretty much unemployed and I just made up something to make myself look employed. Yeah, so, but my girlfriend, Kathy, she's been amazingly supportive. She even dated me while I was homeless and sleeping in my office for a year and a half. And we'll, we'll get into that later. But really cherish your support scepter and also reciprocate. You know, stay humble, hungry, and honest all the time. So, foresight or mental preparation. So this is the article I was talking about earlier. Uh, when I started FaZe, I actually slept in my office for a year and a half because we raised a little bit of money, but we didn't raise enough to pay two people cost of living in Toronto, so me and my co-founder. So I decided, okay, I'll pay you, and I'll pay myself like a very little bit, but I get free pizza in the office, I could sleep in WeWork, so I slept in WeWork. Oh, shit. I wasn't supposed to say that, but anyway, I slept in WeWork for almost half a year, and then I slept at the Extreme Venture Partners penthouse uh, for also half a year. But that was terrifying. Like I had to go in there, set up my sleeping inflatable mattress um, after everyone left, which was like one or two o'clock a.m. And then I had to be up before the first meeting happened, which is like 6 a.m. So I got like very little sleep, but I did sleep really well. I had to go to the gym to shower every day. Um, and it triggers this like really interesting fight or flight response, which really makes you really reevaluate how you do a lot of things in your life. Um, great experience, terrifying at times, but really helpful when starting a tech company because you're just, you're just really focused. Like I didn't own anything. I didn't have anything to worry about. No bills, no ownership, no nothing. I just laser focus on the company. So FaZe, FaZe died at least three times that I can count. So the first one, we were raising capital after we started seeing some early success. Um, but I did close the round in time, and my team that I had at the time, which were five or six people, they were really mad at me that I didn't close the round in time. I told them, you know, it'll coming, it's coming, it's coming. And then they eventually walked out, cursed me all out, um, said there were some really mean things, and I cried for about 24 hours. And then the round closed pretty much 24 hours later, uh, which was also really frustrating because I told them it was coming, it was coming, but they said some really mean things. Um, I tried to get a couple of them back, and I did, but kind of not. So either way, you know, when things look grim, like keep working, keep trying. You know, you can, worst case, if you do fail, you can always start again. You can always get a job. You won't always be able to be an entrepreneur. You can only typically do this stuff when you're in your younger years. When you're older and you have financial commitments, it's much harder to start something yourself. Um, next, next death. Um, so raise some money. Um, hired a uh, new CTO, seemed like a really smart guy, had lots of gray hair, could talk coding, um, but he also, <laughs> I found out later, was outsourcing all of his development work to someone else, which I thought he was doing and he was telling me he was doing. So, but, but again, I was like, okay, there was nothing in your contract saying you couldn't do that, um, but I was surprised to, to hear it. So. I was gonna fire and I talked to my advisors and they kind of were like on the fence. They're like, well, was the result good? Like, or, and I was like, well, you know, it was okay, but it, was, it still felt deceptive. Uh, but then I found out he stole a bunch of Bitcoin from our Bitcoin wallet um, because at this stage of the time, we were doing kind of crypto for gift cards from an app, um, which we later pivoted away from. So after I fired him for stealing Bitcoin, we pivoted from B2B to B2C, uh, got rid of the crypto support, and then we got a billion dollar, pl a billion dollar customer, um, which really made our lives a lot, a lot easier. So pick your finders and your sea levels very, very cautiously. Um, then after that, you know, things were doing good, billion dollar customer, big name, um, getting lots more customers, you know, things are going great. 
And then we had $1.1 million stolen from us from a digital gift card supplier. So how digital gift cards works is we have to keep money with all kinds of digital gift card suppliers in different countries for different currencies. Um, whenever we, us or our customers want a digital gift card, we ping them, they ping, send the gift card back to us. So this great supplier in India that we were working with for many years just decided to up and wipe our account. And we, we couldn't figure out why. And then they admitted to it on email and they started sending us the money back and we were like, oh, thank God. And then they realized how much money it was and then they stopped altogether. Um, so then we were out $1.1 million. So that's a lot of money. And that wasn't our money, that was our customer's money. So customers prepay us, we prepay Excel, like these aggregators in different countries. So then we had our customers asking us, hey, you know, where's our, where's our money? And then we got sued by our customers for $1.1 million. So now we're, we're, we're trying to sue this company in India. We're owed $1.1 million. So that, that pretty much killed us as well. Um, how we got out of that, we actually ended up winning um, against you know, one company. Um, we, we talked to our customers. We worked things out. We got a partnership deal going. And now we're profitable and en route to do over a million ARR this year. So... When things look bleak, you know, if you really want to make it work, you can, you can probably make it work, but you've got to be really, really innovative, really tactful. You've got to play chess when everyone else is playing checkers. That's, that's the best way to describe it. So why did I choose that intro song? Um, I think this is really important, that I think a lot of people should figure this out, and this is the best hack I wish I knew like 15 years ago. So I'm not a businessman, I'm a business comma man. Jay-Z, great advice. Be a business, incorporate yourself. Um, have, your com have whatever company's paying you now, pay your business instead. Keep all your receipts, all your expenses. I expense my dog, my cat, my car, my everything. You can expense literally everything. And what that means is you only pay taxes on your salary minus your expenses. This is a great way to save 30% plus tax in Canada. This is something I wish I knew many, many years ago. And you'd be surprised how many employers will actually do the switch because there's benefits to them. Some, some may not, some will, but benefits to them. 100% real and legal. Something I really wish I knew many years ago. So in summary, um, say no to giving up. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. So when you're in your next fucked up situation, remember that. Thank you, everyone. Kyle, thank you so much for sharing your story. I'm so glad we finally made it happen. Kyle was actually supposed to speak at our three-year anniversary, 2020, COVID killed that. So finally, today, he was able to share his story, and it evolved, and then more fuck-ups happened, so even better today. Um, let's open it up for some Q&A for Kyle. I'm sure there's going to be some great questions. <laughs> 